of people come to the way of most honored one and most glorified one, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Divine Love Hubba Rasul, a new Islamic TV series in which we explore topics related to spirituality, traditional Islam, meditation, secrets of the heart, secrets of the Holy Qur'an and the teachings from the life of Sayyidina Muhammad a symbol of our way and our path, the exemplar of faith, love, patience and good manners. We invite you to join us on the most extraordinary journey. Assalamu alaikum. Whatever Prophet brought for us in the teachings of the noble Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad was for energy. The reality is that we are an energy being and this soul is made from energy, it needs energy and it wants to be defended from negativity. The positive flow of energy and the negative flow of energy. By understanding that reality we reach a state of perfection or move at least in that direction. Is that everything that Prophet brought for us out of the Noble Sunnah, you follow it, later they would begin to teach its reality and its importance. We left off on the importance of the hands, that the hands have tremendous secrets and encodings upon them. That your left hand has this upside down with triangle and a line, right hand has the line and the triangle means this is 18 on the right hand and 81 on the left hand means the perfect symmetry of who we are. One side is reflecting the other side. As a matter of fact, your brain on the left side controls your right side. Your brain on the right side controls your left side. That's how nice Allah designed the symmetry of insan. We talk about the importance of, of keeping the hair to be short, the importance of keeping your head to be covered because all of this is based on people asking, Shaykh, I have negativity, Shaykh, I have problems, I have difficulty whether it's with sustenance, whether it's with energy, whether it's with sicknesses, all of these things that, that we incur upon this earth, Prophet brought the complete solution which was the sunnah. That sunnah is a perfection of the energy, the practices build the energy, the sunnah safeguards and protects that energy. By keeping the hair you take away that negative energy, by keeping the head to be covered you sanctify the energy like a capstone on top of the pyramid. Its full power is when that cap is upon the head because everything else is just being released from the head. And the shayateen and the negative energies they understand where the energy points of insan and they locate themselves upon those energy points and they basically withdraw everything. We talked last night with our people here, it's symbolic from the movie The Matrix. What Allah wanted to show within that reality when they showed that all the human beings, all they really were was a battery. That they were like in pods and all the shayateen were just pulling their energy and that's how they view us on this earth. We are a paradise being walking upon the earth and the shayateen are seeing and saying, look at these energies, they don't have access to that. So their whole interest is to ride upon insan like a big battery. They lock themselves from the back and begin to take all the energy from that insan, whether they're pulling it from the head, pulling it from the heart, pulling it from the feet. So the noble sunnah comes to safeguard that your paradise being and you are to be safeguarded while you're walking upon this earth. And by following the way of Prophet then we are entitled to that protection and malaika are then protecting those who are following the way of the Prophets and all the Prophets brought that reality.
Sheikh Hisham Kabani is a renowned Islamic scholar and spiritual guide who moved to the United States in order to better educate and enlighten people on the spiritual science of Sufism, also known as moral excellence. An overwhelming number of invitations to speak have brought Sheikh Kabani into contact with numerous world leaders, many of whom seek out his counsel and guidance. <laughs> that you are my teacher, and you gave me a lot of advice, and I implemented in leading my country. A sage counselor to both everyday people and world leaders alike, Sheikh Kabani has been, since the early 1990s, an instrumental force in awakening the global Muslim social consciousness, especially regarding the religious duty to stand firm against extremism in all its myriad forms. Islam as Christianity, as Judaism, as any other belief and faith condemn terrorism anywhere it is, in any country. We have to be together because we are brothers and sisters. Sheikh Kabani is also author of over 35 books on such a diverse array of topics as spirituality and mysticism, social and domestic harmony, the nature of the ego, and man's perennial struggle between good and evil. When we go to the hands, we see that by washing the hands, you are releasing tremendous codes. And as soon as you are washing your hand and realize that each finger is symbolic of a reality, that Sayyidina Uthman, the Jami al Quran, and the reality of knowledge is your pinky. Your index finger is the finger of loyalty and struggle, which is to Sayyidina Umar al Farooq. Al Haq wa Zahaq al Baqi means that you spend your life supporting truth and come against falsehood. Support the truth of Allah and the truth of our reality and our soul. Then to the longest finger for Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, where Prophet described that the greatness of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq from what Allah had poured into the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, a Siddiq al Mutlaq. Then the index finger has to do with the family of Prophet and Imam Ali and that support. And then the noble finger upon these four fingers are similar. The most different one is the thumb, which is the identity, and this represents Prophet. This gives insan its majesty. Allah says, we call you back all the way to your thumbprint. Means you have a un unique identity that's uniquely for yourself. Later when you begin to train with your energy, you understand that as soon as you, you're touching your hands, you're activating codes. When you're beginning to understand the energy of your reality, that you have a unique energy for yourself. As soon as that energy begins to touch the hand, you're calling from your reality in Bahru Qudra to become present with you more than what you have now. From whatever energy you have now, as soon as you make tafakkur and begin to understand the importance of the hands, you're able to call and summons that reality that uniquely identified on that thumb. So that shahada finger that brings the oceans of Bahru Qudra, well as if we don't want you to make your shahada means that the power of the soul is moving through that finger. As soon as it scans your identity on the thumb, it calls for that energy to be present with the soul in excess of what's necessary for your day-to-day -day functioning. When Allah wants to open that reality for the believer to bring their energy, to bring their qudra so that they can achieve higher levels of understanding. So it means then the ring and the sunnah of the ring on the right hand. And this is the allegiance to Prophet That ring is from aqeeq so that it opens the power of the heart, brings a softness to the heart or from firuz and turquoise. 
We said before that the turquoise is for taking away negative energy, the taking away hasad. For the ladies same thing that the ring is, is still there as a sunnah and you can wear a necklace, you can wear different jewelry for women that have the turquoise. That turquoise is meant to deflect negative energy that people are looking through their eyes. When they look with their eyes they are able to send a hasad, a jealousy to people. If that hits the turquoise, the turquoise takes it and many times may crack. Because we are an energy being but people don't understand the extent of their energy. That's why Prophet described that be humble and don't do things that gain people's hasad. Don't go around with so much in front of people because their eyes are hungry. As soon as they look at what you have and they don't have, immediately an energy is produced and sent out. And if you are the recipient of that then this leads to sickness and difficulties and lots of mushkalat. So again the sunnah is a shield of protection. So as soon as that one has a turquoise ring it's a deflection. If it's a female and they have the turquoise necklace or turquoise bracelets it's a deflection from that energy. Then you go to the body and the sunnah clothes, the importance of the sunnah clothes, the dress of modesty. And then we'll go to the siwak where the importance of the siwak is that as soon as you use the siwak it's a tremendous cleansing for the energy that's entering into the mouth. It's from everything that you're eating, drinking and breathing it has an energy in it. The food doesn't have the energy but the energy that attaching to that food is what's important. If the person was in a not clean state in junub or in a non-clean state and they're touching food all of their badness is put upon that food. And as soon as you eat it, you begin to take that energy within your being. That's why Prophet described that safeguard where you eat, how you eat, who you eat from. If the person when you're going out and going to restaurants and going to places, if the one serving you has no understanding of washing and they are in completely dirty state, you don't know what they've been doing, they put all of that state that they're in into the food and serve you from that energy. As soon as you put it into your mouth you've now gathered that. I'm Deputy Commissioner Brenda Butterworth Carr, the Commanding Officer of the British Columbia Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Ramadan reminds us all to reflect and show thanks for the countless blessings that we have. On behalf of the RCMP, we would like to extend our support to those of the Muslim faith during this holy month. And I would like to offer my congratulations to Divine Love, Hubeir Rasul and Joy TV for contributing to the conversation and raising awareness about the traditional teachings of Islam. Thank you. The teeth that Allah are putting is the first line of defense that protects that body. Many times Ahlul Bayt their teeth all crack from hasad, from the bad energy of people because as this energy is going in it's affecting the teeth. Exactly what goes in here has a direct correlation to the heart. So only now they found that plaque can cause heart disease. This Prophet was teaching uh, 1500 years ago. Why the siwak? Is the siwak was not meant to be a, a only toothbrush where they say, Shaykh, now I have now big crest, I can use crest toothpaste. No, no, the wood and the, the siwak and the reality in the faqih fi qalbi was shaykh al was that take away the hypocrisy in my heart and the hidden shirk. It had nothing to do with brightening your teeth, but it had to do with energy. That as soon as you put the siwak into your mouth, you immediately grounded the mouth. Whatever energies are flowing into the mouth, as soon as you put the siwak it's wood, that wood is pulling the negative energy out so that that energy doesn't affect the heart. Most important if before you're going to do amal, you're going to recite Qur'an, you're going to pray and that's what Prophet described Allah giving the ajr and the reward of 27 times your salah if you use siwak. That's how Allah wanted to stress that reality, 27 because it's the bab and the door to paradise. Isra'ul Miraj on the 27th, Laylatul Qadr on the 27th. 
Allah then describing, this is the secret to that paradise. If there's an alim or someone who professes to know something and you see them talk and you see them pray and they don't use siwak, immediately come to your understanding, they are not conscious of energy, they are not conscious of the, the realities of the soul. So they're not reaching states of perfection because this is, this is an important sunnah that is the key to the heart. If the heart wants to open and they're not using siwak, how is it going to open? It's impossible because everything they're eating and drinking is going in and mainly from the qadab and bad energy, anger. All of those energies go through the mouth and begin to affect the heart. So means then the siwak and the importance of the siwak, we said like last night, it's not a, a fashion statement. Prophet gave everything as a perfection of energy. Go to the asa and they were all the inheritance of the Prophets. The asa, that when they carry the asa and the reality of the asa is that it was the third prong. And women can also carry asa, there are nice stores online, they have very elegant Asas that you order, that the skein is the third prong, it is a grounding. Prophet was teaching 1500 years ago electrical grounding that your two feet are two currents that are touching this earth. When you begin to understand there's an electromagnetic field upon the earth, it moves on the earth, your two feet are plugged in. That ability is giving you the ability to stand straight. Your feet are plugged into that energy, pulling that energy up. If you begin to understand the flow of energy, that earth energy is all negative and it's coming up, up, up and Prophet described your biggest battle is going to be the equator of your reality. Your equator, like the earth because we are a symbol of the earth, your equator is the belly button. So your body like the earth, Prophet described the entire battle of your being is your stomach, it's going to be your equator. Means all of your earth energy and negative energy, electromagnetic flow of energy is through the earth. All their desires, all their wounds, all their bad character is moving through the earth and moving up your body and clashing now into your belly. All your heavenly energy and heavenly dress upon the soul is your upper lataif and that's why the heart lataif and the heart is based on the upper portion. Allah sends the tanzil rahmah and sends the manifestations and the lights of paradise and the soul realities upon the soul. And this is your yin and yang and this is the great conflict for insan that your energy, heavenly energy is coming and dressing your soul through the upper portion of your reality and all the material desires are upon the earth clashing. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh On behalf of Islamic Supreme Council of Canada, Islamic Association of Western Canada and Jamia Masjid Ali Allah, we congratulate Shaykh Nurjan Mir Ahmadi for starting such a good program for the Rasul. Alhamdulillah, they are inculcating the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through which all the other communities are coming closer to each other, giving right picture of Islam and they are doing a very good job and uh, many congratulations to his whole team and especially Shaykh Nurjan uh, for this program. Thank you so much. The asa was the grounding. As soon as you hold the asa, it's a grounding for insan to pull out the extra energy. Because as you're building your energy and you're building your positive charge and you're taking the negative charge of earth, it has to go somewhere, it's clashing. So these two energies are clashing from the top to the bottom. As soon as they hold the asa, they're able to purge the negative charge out of the body. Means then understanding that flow of energy, we begin to understand many things upon ourselves. When you go home and your feet smell, it's too much dunya energy upon you. That's why pious people, their feet don't smell. Their feet are from the feet of paradise. They're teaching that this dunya energy has a very dirtiness. 
And when you understand the flow of it that coming up and trying to overtake you, every practice and everything that you're doing from your siwak and controlling your head, controlling the cover, washing with the understandings of wudu is all a perfection of the energy. That's why people who have difficulties, these energies are coming up the leg. And from the leg it's moving towards the back and then the clash going to be into the spine and into the stomach. Means then the importance of understanding that energy that whatever you're doing in life you have to wash often. As soon as you shower and visualize that water coming like a waterfall and your soul cleansing itself within the water to relieve itself of these negative energies. When the energy is too negative then it's recommended to make a bath and put salt within that bath. The Himalayan salt, Epsom salt, salt is a natural purifier. When salt takes away negativity, even holding the salt stones takes away negativity. Even putting your meat and rolling it in salt and then rinsing it off takes away all the negativity. Salt Allah gave us that as a natural way of purification. So many awliyaullah they sleep with salt right by their bed and they put that in their mouth as soon as they wake up to make sure that the negative energy is off of them until they can reach to make wudu. Means then understanding the flow of energy then you begin to understand how to wash, how to control that and then the importance that Prophet gave us of wudu. That the water and the power of wudu burns away the fires of shayateen. So as soon as you go to make your wudu you wash and don't speak to anyone, come out and pray two rakahs. That two rakah it becomes the seal of the wudu and the seal and the armor for the believer. Means as soon as they're washing, they're not speaking, they're entering into a purified state. As soon as they pray two rakahs, Prophet told that pray salatul wudu, your wudu become like an armor, that it seals your body from satanic and shaitanic and evilness attacks. So the importance of wudu, it's not something, oh yeah well they used to do that back home, we don't have to do that now, I took a shower in the morning. But if you relieved yourself and lost your state of wudu, you are now best under the attack of shaitan because the satanic attack is looking for a deficiency in your energy field. So when you watch like these sci-fi movies, they, they, they see the shield around. And their ifrit and the shayateen are everywhere. They're waiting for an energy field to be void upon the believer and immediately enter into the tank. So what Prophet brought in the wudu is that the two dirtiest parts of your body and the way that you relieve yourself from the front and from the back are the big entry points for shayateen. All the negative charge immediately runs from below the earth and shoots up to the believer and enters into the body. And again becomes all the lower intestinal problems. So many people have a lot of difficulties in the lower body and everything that Prophet brought was for perfection. It wasn't just something you did back home, you know like old times, so no. These water and the use of water when you relieve yourself from front or from back was a way to sanctify and safeguard your body entrance points. So the shayateen won't enter from those points. And then the reality of wudu, sealing the body with salat al wudu and then all of the sunnah that was given to us as a safeguard and a protection. Subhana rabbika rabba izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen al fatiha. Allah SWT is most merciful. Even the Prophet would make dua to Allah, what about us? The Prophet would cry in these nights of Ramadan, cry long hours, make dua to Allah. And he is the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah. What about us? You should do more of that. And then the Prophet taught to say, Ya Aisha, his beloved wife, the special dua for these last few moments of Ramadan. That I want you to keep reciting over and over again. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anha. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anha. 
Ya Allah, you are most forgiving, you love to forgive. Ya Allah, please forgive me. Please forgive us. And you include in your niya, your parents, your spouse, your children, your brother, your sister, your loved ones. Make do for all of them. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم لك سمنا وبك آمنا وعليك توكلنا وعلى رزقك أفترنا بسم الله وعلى بركة الله اللهم بارك لنا فيما رزقتنا وقنا عذاب النار